Hey guys, welcome back to Noob Nerd. If you've stuck with me um, for my last upload, if you're still here, if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel. It's a week, it's been over a week since my last upload of my gaming live streams. I do gaming live streams, I do reviews, I do comic book reactions. If you haven't visited the channel yet, welcome you. I appreciate all the support I get. Like, come, subscribe, and share. But this video, the Joker review, again, it's going to be me going off the cuff. Um, usually, I've I've actually transitioned my reviews more to voiceover of the past few few reviews. Stranger Things three, uh, what else? Titans, I think as well. Well, I think I. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I was experimenting between face to face and um and um voiceover, but. I know this is a Joker review, and the the movie came out like almost two weeks. Um, oh, just one and a half weeks, and that's not good enough. Uh, I sincerely apologize. I can make excuses all day long. Of course, I could say oh, I had work to do, which I did. And I'll, truth is, I wasn't really feeling up to it, and I just felt like I didn't want to make this video. I was like, oh, it's over a week anyway. It's like there's no point doing it, is there? Nobody's gonna see it. But this movie deserves better than that and I want to voice my opinion because there's a lot being said about this movie both by the media and fans and just casual moviegoers in general in public because this movie's hit that kind of milestone in which it's re reached a cultural awareness even before it, ca it came out publicly so yeah I just wanted to put my hat into the ring and just because because there's so many interpretations to this movie I just want to share my own and share how much I'm fascinated and enthralled, very much enthralled, if that's a word, interested, fascinated by all the different interpretations, which one fits, which one doesn't, some of the criticisms that I think might be unjustified, or maybe are justified, these are my opinions, and not yours, and of course you have your own opinions, leave them down in the comments below, I always appreciate the feedback, and just, obviously not in my videos, but also the movies that we all, of the genre we all know and love, the superhero genre, the comic book genre, which is able to just split into all these subgenres. This is a movie like no other superhero movie, but yet it's one that I've been waiting for a long time and I've been expecting for a long time. And that's almost the indie style of filmmaking, almost a standalone piece about a, f a psychological thriller. This is the one we've been waiting for. I think the closest to it, ironically enough, was The Dark Knight. Which many think Joker, the Heath Ledger's iconic performance, was his movie. But a movie like Prisoners, if you don't haven't searched this movie, a movie you don't really go to the cinema to watch. Like, let's be honest, I, th I think Todd Phillips intended to make this film more of an indie house film, but of course, he, they they wanted it to be more exposed. Yeah, and what, Todd Phillips wanted to get that buzz, so he used the comic book property to get to that point. Because that's the, that's the range right now, isn't it? Using the Joker character, who better to have a psychological thriller of someone you recognise, someone that's so important to the comics, but making it its own separate thing. And of course, I, the other reason I wanted to make this review was because I, I've talked so much about the trailers already. And the trailers, of course, accentuated this point even, my point even further. Or the point in general was that Joker is a movie, if, if it wasn't a Joker, you wouldn't really see this movie. Most casual audiences wouldn't see that. In the cinemas, they wouldn't go and spend ten bucks to go to watch this movie, including myself. I'll just wait for it to just pop on film on film four, or like a Netflix thing, where it's like on the comfort in your own home. It's a small movie. It's your movie. It's a personal movie. It's not a blockbuster movie. But of course, it's earning blockbuster money, and rightly so, because it's a psychological thriller, like Prisoners. Like, watch that movie. Um, I give me. I haven't watched enough of these films, of these types of films, and it, it probably it probably took a comic book character like the Joker to make me actually watch this movie, along with loads of other people. For crowds, every theatre was, was packed in my area at least, for R-rated film. That's when you know it's popular and actually gathering some buzz. So yeah, this video is going to contain spoilers, I'm, trying to, I'm not going to try and make this as long as possible. Just wanted to throw that out there and just be, it's more of a discussion type of review, isn't it? So, yeah, I'm going to put rever <laughs> review slash discussion with spoilers in it. 
Well, some of you might skip this part to my thoughts or just skip the video altogether. But I appreciate if you're still hanging about. Drop a like. <laughs> of course. Um, of course, I'm kind of happy to do even more discussions on this on other video on other videos like live streams and stuff like that. Maybe thinking of doing a podcast. Maybe that's what I'm suited about. But yeah, we've got this format for now. Let's just talk about the actual film itself. Of course, Prisoners, King of Comedy, of course, is inspired by... Apparently, that's criticism that it could have been inspired too much by that film. I've never watched the film personally, so I can't really compare that. So I can only really compare it to its own thing. But I do see the similarities in terms of... Not in terms of any other comic book genre, but being, again, an indie psychological thriller. It's really really aiming to produce art in the sense that it can strike a societal impact it wants to create a conversation and again Dark Knight was the closest to that in terms of how far can people go the Joker is the perfect character to do that that's why he's the most interesting character of all time and him without Batman is proven now more than ever that he's one of the greatest characters of all time because fictional characters in general because he doesn't need Batman to be interesting now there's so many interpretations of him. He's even more interesting with Batman. Is that just a cherry on top? It's a beautiful cherry on top. I can't wait to see what they do with him in other movies with Batman. And I say other iterations of Joker because it's a standalone film and this shouldn't require a sequel. Walking Phoenix has put his life again into a role. He's done it again. He's done it again. He only picks movies that are best suited to his talents while also pushing the envelope and always pushing his. I don't think he's even pushing his limit because his limit is endless. He's one of the best actors working in cinema. And I'm so glad he played this role because, in my opinion, this is the best portrayal of the Joker in my eyes. Because, of course, when The Dark Knight came out, I wasn't so in tune with that because I was a kid back then when I watched it. So it's not really fair to compare the two films, especially when it's a Batman film and it's a standalone Joker film. And a standalone Joker film that's not even trying to be comic book accurate per se. Whereas The Dark Knight, of course, is a comic book based movie, PG-13. Whereas Joker is, of course, more R-rated violent. You can't really compare it to two. And you can't really compare it in my head. All I can say is that they're both excellent Jokers. And Walking Phoenix is my Joker right now in terms of what I enjoy, what I think of the most. But, of course, it's just came out three weeks ago. So maybe if I watch Dark Knight in two months' time or something, maybe five years later I'll be like, oh, nah, Heath Ledger gave me the most impact. Because that interrogation scene. Woo! But... Here, this movie is so relevant today, and I think it'll be relevant to movies across the. Uh, it'll be relevant till the almost the dawn of time. Almost, I think it will have that impact, same as The Dark Knight. I'm not like, I'm not saying this movie is like, ten out of ten. Like, oh my god, everything's perfect, because it probably isn't. It probably isn't. May I might need to watch it again. But from what I saw, it was just sensational. It got, it got better and better as it went on. It got better and better as it went on. It just spoke to like the mental illness side of things I think I've touched on this in the trailer reactions you should check them out if you haven't yet <laughs> I'm so grateful to have a popular video with that first trailer reaction tease trailer so that's I kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of in debt to this film for like a lot of the views I got for one video so I'm back I'm here um so yeah the mental illness it's, 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 in, it's set in 1970s Gotham or 1980s, early 1980s Gotham. They don't really actually say actually, which is so cool because they just they just leave it open ended. I'll touch and I'll talk about that in a bit. But 1980s Gotham, but you know it's pretty much it's, it's representing real life society, and Gotham City is supposed to be an allegory for just a typical urban city like New York because it was filmed in there, like Taxi Driver and so on. So, um, and you just see the. The atmosphere he's living in is a direct reflection of his mental state. His mental state reflects Gotham City. Gotham City reciprocates or makes worsens his condition and how mental illness is not really seen as a thing. It's not a thing. It's just like, you're a weirdo. Uh, sorry, you're going to cut funding to this thing. Um, you're not going to get any meds. Um, oh, have you been taking the meds? Uh, okay, you haven't been taking your meds? Uh, okay. Nothing really there. There's no really like caring for the person for walking phoenix walking phoenix is left to actually say for himself that he is off a fleck as, as i should call him off a fleck is left to of course say that my computer's just turned off okay guys i'm back again 
Um, my screen just turned off. I don't know if it's still recording. I think it is, but I just want to make sure that my computer's still rolling because it's been the first video in a while. You know what I mean? Uh, never happens like this. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, what was I gonna say? Walking Phoenix, half a fleck. It's all about. Oh yeah, I have negative thoughts. You don't realize what you're asking me. You're not asking the same questions all the time, and that just sets a precedent. Okay, and you've seen that kind of thing before. I think I've seen that kind of thing before. But this is a this is a new casual audiences. I'm not saying that everyone's passive, but in terms of the casual movie expecting Fast and Furious blockbuster type movie, Avengers Endgame actually was a blockbuster movie, but it still was a built up thing. It still built up to something, didn't it? And this movie does it so well because it does it in one movie, doesn't it? The old fashioned style. Okay, fine. You build up character. You build up character. Okay, it might not be the most exciting to audiences nowadays, especially nowadays with, of course, social media and and just the ADHD people just want action right now, right now, right now. And of course, comic book landscape as well. They had to separate themselves from that comic book normal normality. But this movie builds up to something. Even if it can be considered boring, it's character work. It's constantly character work. And you just you you're brought and you you're still carrying on on that line because you're still focused on what's going on with the movie because Walking Phoenix's performance is so breathtaking to witness. He carries this movie because he's the only character in the movie that matters, that should matter in his own head, and the, the direction of the movie, the cinematography, it just all revolves around his small, how small he is at the start, walking up, walking up the stairs, but he's so depressed. He's not really depressed. He's like. It's just like he's always been this way. He's always been a bit off. He's never been normal. Then he became evil. Or did he? We don't know. We don't know where he came from. He's ambiguous. He's not even half a fleck. He is adopted. <laughs> You're adopted. <laughs> Which is so cool because he leaves the Joker again. Calls back to the comics. Because it still has some cool Easter eggs. And it's still capturing, as I said this before, capturing the essence of the character is more important than capturing the, the exact moment of how the comic happened. Okay, I'm not here to fire shots at anyone like Zack Snyder because I actually like his work, mostly. But it's more, the, the more the greater effect occurs from gathering the essence of what the, what makes the character great. And th then that's what will people resonate to. Because it will make the casual audiences like it. Because... There's a reason these characters are popular in the first place, and it'll please comic book fans, hopefully, who are not stupid purists who want to see everything be done exactly as how the comics are made. You know what I mean? It should be its own art, it should be its own thing, with the same character, with the same essence, but also adhering to a current time, a current state of affairs with mental health issues trying to be put, brought back into the limelight, or being put into the limelight, being recognised as its own thing for once. In this decade, at least, which is a good advancement for health in this society. Jeez, I'm talking like I'm a bloody deep guy. I'm a doctor. <laughs> but yeah, this movie really asks you those questions. It's all, it's all about challenging the audience as well as challenging the protagonist. But then you become, as the movie progresses, instead of us being on the same wavelength as the protagonist, oh, he's doing a Joker thing, he's... Okay, fine, he's getting beat up by people. We've seen that before. We, we're, we're with the protagonist, but we recognise that he's not living in a good place. He's not really doing anything that's going to strike any hero, heroism out. And as he becomes more, oh, excuse me, guys, as he becomes more heroic in his eyes, how he accidentally kills the men with the gun given to him by someone else, of course, again, the society giving him the means to become evil. It's not it's, it's as much the society's fault as his own mental health that in some ways is not even his fault as, as well as we see from his family backstory he of course goes to like it he goes to so at first at the, in the bathroom dance he's trying to contain what he just did trying to control himself with the dance scene with the music the soundtrack is amazing I'm listening to it on strings every day every day in my ears it's so good just to him in the bathroom trying to regain his composure his jerky movements his off centre facial expressions with other people but you don't know what's real or not what's real or not he was never with the girlfriend or was he how much did he see of the girl how much did they two talk actually or did they just not talk at all was it all just a lie was it all just a, in his head I think it was his mom's relationship with his with Thomas Wayne that when that got revealed I was I was in shock I was, I was so gassed and I knew the mate beside me who loved watching Gotham as well was like, oh yes, give me some Bruce Wayne action, give me some Bruce Wayne connections.
But of course, then we he recognised, as well as everyone, I think most people have recognised, that the need not to have Batman involved. But have him connected, but also, like, Bruce's... The Thomas Wayne family is as much connected to Gotham and a part of Gotham as the Joker is. And the Joker is... The, the, them referring to the Waynes is not is at, at the start of a cool way of drawing more people into the story because of course oh Batman cool they're connected brothers oh my god but of course that's a stupid idea in the, in the respect especially in like defining it as oh they're always brothers because that's not the point the point is that he thinks they might have been brothers he thinks that he could have got this rich glorious life but he never got it instead we've got a mother who's mentally deranged with him becoming more mentally deranged it's of course about the class system H high class lower class of course we've seen that before again i've seen that before but we've seen that in the big screen really challenging the audience to question is it still like this today is it still like oh is the divide between the high uh, high upper class and the lower class still too large is services being provided still as large is the ignorance of certain people still a large because i love the way they prove they made thomas way not too much of a dickhead like but you can see why the joker by watching his videos and why the, the riots would occur from his comments of course it's a, a bit more dramatized, dramatized version of it because of course if, if it was in real life if someone said oh, okay poor people imply that poor people were clowns there would be uproar but mostly on social media but of course in this case there's no social media so they just go on the streets and just go and wear clown masks who knows if that's even real because Thomas Wayne, because when you meet him in person, you can understand his thought process being like, oh, you're laughing at me, you're deranged. He doesn't understand. Many people don't understand that he's, he's, his laughter is actually an illness. His laughter is actually an illness. What a clever way of doing it. And I think most people, I think some people actually, of course, it made sense when you watch the trailers. But here, actually seeing him have a card being like, I've got a condition, sorry about that. His laughter is hurting him. He doesn't want to laugh because he's that, he's, I keep saying depressed, that's a common word to use. It's just that sad. The movie is sad. But you see a hope in a brighter future that's just snatched away at him. But you see it in his heart, head because you see him in the audience of the the Murray show. He's in the audience of the Murray show. And that's a, such a cool scene because you think it's real at first, I think. But then you notice that he's just being too overly nice. He's been like, oh, I would, I would get rid of everything of this show if I had a son like you, Arthur. It's like no, you wouldn't, would you? You wouldn't. You, they, they they don't let they don't they don't outright say to the audience that oh this is all bull crap. You can tell you let the they they let the audi oh, Todd Phillips lets the audience just try and figure out their own thing, which is what perfect movies are about. Well, not perfect movies, just art is about. And Oscar worthy movies. Walker Phoenix deserves an Oscar. Todd Phillips, cinematography. Of course, Todd Phillips directed some photography. I forgot his name. Soundtrack, of course. Forgive me. I need to. I should, for a movie like this, everyone who worked in this movie deserves, deserves full credit for craft, for true craft. No CGI. Yes. <laughs> it's calm. Um, what else do I miss? Zazie Beats, of course. Pl minimal role, but she serves her purpose well. I wish we actually saw more of her, actually. I say that a lot about characters that I like. But of course, Walker Phoenix is the main focus. Does he beats does just enough to just accentuate the typical woman that she he would idolize in the world that is so beating him down, but also someone who can lighten his mood up, someone who can laugh at his jokes in the comedy club because nobody else will. But at the end, it's just his hopes of someone actually liking his jokes and him actually getting a stable, some stability, not just mentally, but outside in the environment around him. But the only stability you can find is chaos, and chaos is amazing in this movie. Of course, him escaping the crowd. Him escaping the crowd, of course, like, oh, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Why would he just walk into the Zazzy Beats' room and start kissing her? That doesn't make any sense. Again, letting the audience figure out. Maybe because, how did Arthur Fleck so easily got into the room? Full of rich people like Thomas Wayne watching the Charlie Chaplin movie, which is a good callback to, of course, the class divide, because they're watching the Charlie Chaplin movie about the working class and industrial revolution or industrial cities and fact factories and how hard it was for Charlie Chaplin, and they make a comedy out of it. And again, of course, all the rich people are ironically laughing at the expense of the poor people in the Charlie Chaplin film. Bloody clever. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Why did he, how did he easily get into that? Uh, into that, uh, into that 
cinema. Of course, of course, that's a good thing about subjective things like that is because some plot holes that were actually plot holes, you don't know if they're plot holes or not because it's all in his head. You don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's one of the other reasons I want this movie to be standalone. So we never know. You make it up. You know. You 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 know in your head. You make, you figure it out. You do it. You don't need any other movies to explain everything. To explain, oh, what was he doing when Batman showed up? You've seen how what, how will the Joker react? You've seen in other movies. This is how the Joker became the Joker. The definitive origin story. I didn't think they could do it, but they could on film and make it work. Make him someone who we don't know. Came, we don't know who his true origin is. We don't know what, who his parents were, but we knew who raised him and. Maybe he was still off it a bit even before he got abused by the boyfriend. You know what I mean? Of course, if there was a boyfriend. <laughs> of course, I like um, his costume when he arrives. He poses as the security guard in the cinema where all the rich bastards are watching the movie. And of course, I like his getup for the whole movie. I like how he slowly but surely becomes the Joker we all know and love. Um. The, but the, the most visceral, visceral thing that I that's something that struck me especially was the, just you know the scene with the white mask just him with the white mask and of course the the little person and of course the big guy I forgot their names I told you it was a perfect movie I would have remembered the names <laughs> but of course they come in try and offer condolences to Arthur again something that's a bit weird like would, you, would they actually do that in this movie that we've already set out but they actually come in and be like, "Oh yeah, I know we didn't know you too much, but we lost you. You lost your job. Sorry about that." Well, I think I think that's why they came. But him with the white mask, just being like <sighs> one minute, just so nothing, just full of nothing. With the white mask looking so creepy, and also stabs him in, in, in with the scissors. Of course, a, a little funny moment, a dark humor. That's what I like to see from the Joker. The, this little person can't open the door properly. That got a huge laugh from the audience. That scene there is literally. I was there like that was the. I think subconsciously before that, of course, I was like, "This guy's the Joker." But the, consciously, I'm watching him, watching that scene. I'm like, "That is the Joker scene." Because he's not. Okay, I know he's not fully the Joker yet, but that is like a typical, like in a good way, typical henchman scene. Just him going from the Joker, just going from, "Oh, what will I do now?" But you see it all. You see the from Joaquin Phoenix's acting. You don't have to get him to say that. He, you see in his head. His facial expressions, the actors, the best actors are the ones who don't have to say anything. That's why I like Ryan Gosling and Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> That's why I like them so much. They don't have to say anything to know what they're feeling. They're just feeling like nothing. There's nothing going on. The Joker, typical henchman scene. Henchmen's around him. Henchmen are like, what's going on here? Of course, they're not the henchmen in this case, but it's to how the Joker reacts, going from nothing to unpredictability in a second. And then letting the person go because he was always nice to him. It doesn't make any sense. Everything doesn't make any sense to the conscious brain, but it makes sense to him. That was the, that moment when I was like, oh my god, that was, he's the Joker. He's betraying the comics, the essence of what I love about the Joker. Going from unpredictability to fun to happiness to humor to killing to blood to nothing. All in one go. All in all these emotions, all these humorous, all these darkness, all in one. In the simple scene that he's not even really in the Joker, he's just with his henchmen, just working out what is, how does his mind process what's going to happen next or what's going to happen before, what happens now. That is that scene, especially. I know I'm sp focusing too much on that scene, but that really, ex that really exemplified the Joker's. That was the Joker. That scene was the, from that point onwards. I was like, I consciously knew Walker Phoenix has become the Joker. He's captured deep into the essence of what the Joker is. And portrayed it on screen in a way that nobody else could. He's got the comics and he's put in. He's, he's done it. He's done it. He's betrayed that on screen. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. The ending. Smears blood on his face. That's it. The cherry on top again. Like Heath Ledger. He revels in it. He revels in the loving. He revels in the kill. But at the end he's like. What's the joke? It's the joke that he created his biggest enemy didn't he? And I wouldn't be surprised if they, the studio Warner Brothers did add that in. To make it more connect to Batman and maybe open the line for future movies. Oh, I didn't even notice he killed the psychiatrist at the end. The blood fin uh, footprints. You know what I mean? I didn't even notice. Maybe he didn't kill him, kill her in that little scene. Maybe it was just him killing someone else or him running away in heaven. Because it looks like heaven at the end or something like that. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? The music at the end as well. 
the chaos he builds. And finally, I need to mention this, and of course, him so simply shooting a gun is portrayed in such a horrific way that, we, of course, sometimes you can get desensitized to these type of stuff, but each bullet counts in Joker. Each bullet counts. And again, it's talking about building up old-fashioned movie making, building up to a moment, and the killing of a man is so impactful, more impactful than thousands of cars just flying and exploding. And I'll keep on comparing to Fast and Furious, they're not the only... I like Fast and Furious movies, I keep on digging at them, but you know what I mean, compared to just T-sensitized violence or action movies, that's what I love about old-fashioned, pro proper movies. Building up to a moment, and the horrific violence of the Joker snaps you out of it. Okay, maybe this guy, okay, you like this guy's becoming the Joker, but again, this is why you shouldn't be like him. You shouldn't be like this horrific monster. But at the same time, you get where he's coming from. Robert De Niro does a good job of the way he acts. Again, portraying the typical presenter who's likable to the casual, to the wider audience. But of course, from the Joker's point of view, and of course, to the of course the lower classes rising up, he's being ignorant, just like Thomas Wayne, just like other people are, just like the women in this movie who are passive. The mother, okay, the mother was passive, okay. The mother didn't know what she was doing. She. She's not her fault, this, ha this habit to Arthur's life, but it's her passivity. It's, it's not just people being actively ignorant, it's people being passively ignorant to what's going on. To bring about change, you stop the people, <laughs> you stop the dangerous people, but also you stop the people in the background helping these dangerous people to operate on these levels, like Alfred, helping Thomas Wayne, helping Bruce Wayne act on these dangerous ideals. The mother, the the mother, maybe she, maybe she was mentally ill, maybe she's not. We don't know. She let the boyfriend hit her son or put and retire him to a radiator. It's not just their fault. It's not just it's everyone's fault. Society's fault. That's the joke would say, and that's why everything deserves to burn and be into chaos. The Joker when he's spinning, you see him behind the curtains, <coughs> him just so serious, being like, I know what I'm gonna do. And you think you know what he's going to do. He's going to think he's going to shoot himself. But he's not going to do that. You know he's not going to do that. But you don't know what else he's going to do. He's going to kiss the woman. Of course, that's a good uh, reference to Dark Knight Returns comic. That was really cool. I didn't even know that was a reference. But him, just every... All that interaction in the in the talk show, amazing. You get what you deserve. <laughs> shoot him in the head. And, uh, of course, the whole... The, you see the multiple TV screens and my mate was like oh yeah in one of the screens he does get caught by the people by the police that's how he gets in the police car <laughs> I didn't even notice that that's a cool way of looking at it it's like a game it's like a puzzle in his head and yeah I think that's uh, yeah I could go on about this movie for ages um, I've gone over I think I've again I've always gone over the limit with these discussions let me check if my computer is still working it would be a shame if I wasn't recording still if you didn't hear that, it would be a shame if I was if I stopped recording by mistake, because I've talked awfully a lot. And if you've made it to the end of the video, um, I really appreciate your support. Of course, these are not the only types of videos I do. I'm gonna do reactions to stuff. Star Wars is coming up, of course. Jedi Fallen Order gameplay, maybe live streams. I might be thinking of going on Twitch. So stay tuned for that kind of stuff. I'll let you know when that occurs. Of course, more reviews, maybe some tier maker videos films old films new films comic book reactions reviews and discussions and yeah always appreciate the support if you made it into the end of, if you made it to the end of this video you're a legend uh yeah like come subscribe and share i really appreciate the support and i'll always make sure that i'm uploading <laughs>